Hey, this is Larry Goins, and I want to talk to you today about shadow inventory, okay? There's a lot of things I need to go over. Some of you may not even know what the term shadow inventory means, but it's something that you need to be aware of, and you need to understand, so that way you know how to take advantage of and how to anticipate what's going to happen in the market. Now, basically shadow inventory, the definition of shadow inventory, is basically properties that are listed, not listed, but properties that are not listed, but are kind of looming in the shadows that will eventually become foreclosures possibly, okay? It's basically defined, say by Standard & Poor's definition, it's defined as any property that the mortgage is at least 90 days late, or a property that's in the foreclosure process, okay? or a property that is bank owned but is not on the market. In other words, it's a property that there's a possibility of it coming on the market in the future, but it's not on the market right now. And that's what shadow inventory is. And if you just go to Google and type in shadow inventory, you can read a lot of different articles. I get articles about it. Also being in the mortgage business, I'm able to read a lot of things on the mortgage side of it that not a lot of people know just as a general rule. For example, uh, I've read articles that have said we have anywhere from 1.7 million to 1.9 million in shadow inventory. I've also read articles that have said we have anywhere from 3.8 million to 4.5 million in shadow inventory. Now that's a big difference, okay? That's a big difference. And I don't think anybody really actually knows the exact number. And <clears throat> a lot of articles that you'll read and a lot of things that you'll hear will talk about the doom and gloom, about all these properties being dumped on the market. Well, I want you to think about this. There's a foreclosure process, okay? I mean, if somebody is 90 days delinquent, okay? If they're 90 days delinquent, by the time that property gets on the market, okay? By the time that property gets on the market all the way over here, it could be three months, six months, nine months, or even 12 months before that property gets on the market. And uh, real quick, I wanna to talk to you about the different types of foreclosure processes there are. There's some states have a mortgage and some have a deed of trust. And some states have to go through the judicial system, through the court system, to foreclose on the property. Now, <clears throat> I've read articles about this as well, and, and I know you've probably seen things that uh, online or, or heard people talk about the delays in the foreclosure process. Well, the states that have to go through the judicial system, they have a backlog of foreclosures that are going to be put on the market eventually. If the person doesn't either pay it off, refinance, or do a short sale, okay? So if the property actually has to go through the foreclosure process, um, there are actually 27 states that do not have to use the court system for that. And those states are, I've got, I wrote down some things here, uh, states like uh, Nevada, Colorado, it can take them two years to get through all of their foreclosures that are looming in the shadows. Um, and California wouldn't be far behind with around three years, something like that. And those are some of the 27 states that do not have to access the court system to be able to do their foreclosures. Now, states that do have to access the court system, their backlog, their delay is much, much more. In fact, New York is absolutely the worst. If New York, and I jotted this down, if New York, if all of the lenders to clear their foreclosures in the current state that it is right now, as I'm recording this video, it would take them at their current rate now. Now you know they're gonna speed up the process, they're hiring more people, they're getting things moving, but it could take them 62 years to go through all of the foreclosures that they're going through right now and to process that whole thing from beginning to end, okay? But you know, they're not gonna take 62 years to do that. For example, uh, New Jersey would take them 49 years. Florida, Massachusetts, and Illinois uh, would be around 10 years to clear their current prospective backlog 
of properties that they're going through foreclosure because they have to access the court system and the courts are so bogged down, so backed up, and I'm sure they're starting to do second and third shift in the courts in some areas. They've probably started that in other areas where they already have second and third shift courts. Um, so it's going to take a long time to get through this process. In fact, uh, and I'll talk more about this later, but in fact, you probably aren't going to see much change or much turnaround until probably three or four years from now, 2000, 2013, 14, 15, somewhere around there is when you're going to start seeing things back to normal. So anyway, uh, a couple more things I want to go over. Uh, let's see. As of just recently, there's been as many as 11.1 million of the 55.1 million homes with mortgages that were in jeopardy or in default over the next five years and a potential, uh, those are potential contributors to the shadow inventory, okay? So out of 55.1 million loans, as many as 11.1 of them were in default, okay? In default at some stage or some point. So um, anyway, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Mortgage delinquencies fail 8.3% in the first quarter of this year, and that was down from a record 10% of the same time last year as I'm recording this video right now today, okay? So the delinquencies are going down, but there's all these shadow inventory that's out there. Now, I want you to be aware. I don't want you to freak out. I don't want you to be nervous about this because they're not all going to hit the market at the same time. I mean, think about it. It could be three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, on some of these, it could be even more. Now, also, some of these are gonna be sold at short sale. Some of them are gonna be short, sold at short sale. Some people are gonna get back on their feet, they're gonna get another job, they're gonna get current on their loan, they're gonna refinance their loan to somebody else, or something like that, be able to sell their property. So, uh, let's move on. A couple of things I wanna cover for you. Uh, <clears throat> oh, the shadow inventory has, in fact, from some of the articles I've read and some of the research I've done, it the shadow inventory has declined by nearly one fifth since they it peaked in 2010. Okay, the shadow inventory peaked in 2010 and is starting to go down, but there are still a lot of properties in shadow inventory. And guys, this makes for a prime time for you to be buying real estate. In my office right here, I'm, I'm in my boardroom, our conference room right now, where we have our, our training board up here. This is where we do our inner circle. But um, in my office, we are doing deals and we're paying 25 to 35% of list price, okay? 25 to 35% of list price. And, and you gotta make a lot of offers to do that. You can't just go out here and find a house for $50,000 and think you're going to be able to pay ten thousand dollars for it, or, or, or twenty thousand, or whatever. You you can't do that on every house. You've got to make a lot of offers, and that's exactly what we do. We're on the phone every day, all day long. We're making offers. We got deals on the board. We're working deals, and we just had a closing yesterday. We bought a house for ten thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars, and we sold that house for nineteen thousand dollars cash, just like that. And we bought and sold it the same exact day. And that was a house that was listed for $35,000 and then it dropped it for, to $30,000. But we paid ten, which is 30%. And then we sold it for nineteen, dollars which was a lot. It was still a good deal for the buyer. So, and they're actually going to do a little bit of work. And he's like $3,500 in work. And then they're going to rent it out. And you can rent out a house like this for seven, dollars $800 a month. So it was a really good deal for the buyer. And it's a good deal for us. We made almost $10,000 on the deal, and we never saw the property. So anyway, a couple things I want to talk about here for you, okay? Uh, first, I want, to, I want to establish a little bit about the shadow inventory, okay? Um, a property that's currently listed for sale, that's, that is called actual inventory. If a property is, is vacant, 90 days or more delinquent, 
or it's somewhere in the foreclosure process, or it's already an REO property and the bank owns it, but it's not on the it, not on the market for sale. That is shadow inventory versus actual inventory. And I'm going to give you a couple statistics that I've been doing some research on and have found. Uh, there's about 950,000 REOs right now in Realty Track's database. In Realty Track, that's RealtyTrack.com, R-E-A-L-T-Y-T-R-A-C.com. Realty Track is the largest database of foreclosures, and that's what they track is foreclosures and trends and all that. They're great guys over there. I actually flew out one time, met the president, and sat down and talked with them, and and, uh, and got to know those guys, and they they have. A great program, great product where they track the foreclosures and, and you'll see them quoted on CNN and MSNBC and all those different uh, TV shows. Um, now, of the $950,000 in REOs in Realty Tracks database, about 30% of those are listed for sale, okay? For sale. And this puts about 665,000 properties that are instantly right now in the shadow inventory. These are properties right now that are in shadow inventory. Um, now, there's about another 1.2 million properties that are currently in foreclosure. Now, of the 1.2 million properties in foreclosure, about 18% of these properties are listed for sale. They're basically what's called short sales. They're listed for sale and they're, they're, they're on the market and the owner is currently trying to sell the property before it goes into foreclosure, okay? Now, behind these is another five million properties where the borrower is delinquent on the home, okay? Another five million properties where the, the borrower is delinquent on the home. And of these, about 15% are on the market, okay? Now, that's adding another 4.2 million properties to the shadow inventory. So, the total pipeline of shadow inventory is around 7.15 million properties that are either in delinquency or in foreclosure, and approximately 5.9 million of those are not currently on the market. They're not on the market, okay? So, now, there's been some other dramatic uh, estimates, okay? out there that you'll read and see online and things like that about the size of the shadow inventory. And, and some of those seem to make the assumption that all of these properties are going to hit the market at the same time. That is not going to happen. It's going to be a long process to get through this whole shadow inventory thing until the economy turns around, people get back to work, they're able to pay their bills and clean up their credit or, or stay in their home. It's going to take several years for this to happen, and it's going to take more years than other, more years than some states in different states. In other words, some states are going to take a long time, other states are going to take a shorter time. And I'm going to go through and tell you a few, few of those markets in a little bit, okay? Now, let's look at a more conservative approach about shadow inventory. Um, now, this, mark, this way that I'm getting ready to tell you is typically more how the market behaves. You're not gonna have all these properties dump on the market at one time. There's a huge pipeline. They're trying to get into the court systems for, for the states where they require a judicial foreclosure and some are short sales and some people are getting a job and catching up their payments. Some people were able to refinance if they can get a loan to do this. And, uh, and then there's ultimately some that are foreclosures and they'll become REOs and ultimately get listed on the MLS. So, let's look at a more conservative approach, okay? There's a certain percentage of the delinquencies that will be resolved prior to foreclosure. Some estimates of the shadow inventory, estimates that all of the shadow inventory is gonna become REOs and hit the market, and that's absolutely not true. Some of them will be paid off or be uh, be sold, be paid off, or refinanced, or whatever, as I mentioned before. So, um, you're looking at probably 3.25 to 3.75 million of these homes that will actually go on the market as REO properties and constitute the real shadow inventory. Now, uh, one of the other important things is market timing. When will these properties hit the market? Now, um, it's it's gonna take a long process, as I've mentioned, and it is measurable, 
And you're probably looking at, as I mentioned before, 2013, 14, maybe even 15, before you start to see the market start going back up, okay? Uh, it's gonna take quite a while for that. And um, this is also, here's another very important thing. This is also assuming that home builders don't get overly excited and start building and adding to the inventory. Because you have the existing homes that aren't in foreclosure, you have the existing homes where people are just getting transferred to a job, they need to sell this house and buy another one, you got empty nesters, you got first time home buyers, you got all different people that are buying and selling their houses, but the foreclosures are a huge part of this right now and that's keeping the prices down. That's keeping the prices down. So uh, you've got you've got the foreclosures, you've got the short sales, you got the REO foreclosures, and and that's what's keeping the prices down because the banks want to turn them, they want to get rid of them. And I love dealing with the realtors on bank-owned properties because let me tell you, bank-owned properties are the low-hanging fruit. Bank-owned properties are low-hanging fruit. I personally don't like short sales, although that's a big percentage of the market okay in fact i've got a statistic that i found that uh where short sales accounted for about 30 percent of the total sales last year short sales about 30 percent of the total sales last year but i think as personally a short sale is a long buy it takes a long time to do a short sale you got to negotiate with the bank and they're they're very difficult they're just trying to get as much money as they can out of it before it goes into foreclosure because they know once the once the person moves out once it gets vacant you know it's going to be vandalized it's it, it's going to get run down they're going to have to take care of it they're going to have to 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 take care of the yard, any repairs or maintenance, or maintenance if, if something happens, they've got to take care of. Sometimes they get code violations on them, and so the city's on their back. So the bank just spends a lot more money once a property gets in foreclosure. So they're trying to get as much money as they can right now from the short sale. So I personally like to deal with the REOs. That's where we get probably 90 to 95% of our properties are real estate owned, bank owned properties. Because quite frankly, I've never met a bank that had decided that they were just gonna keep a house. In the negotiating process, I've never had a bank that said, we just decided we're gonna keep this. Well, now for sale, my owner can do that. They can say, we decided not to sell. But a bank is going to sell their property. They're absolutely going to sell their property, okay? So anyway, um, I like dealing with the REOs. The REOs are the quickest, fastest, easiest way to buy property, in my opinion. That's what we do right here in our office. Right outside this window right here, uh, uh, in front of me, we've got all of our deals listed on the board. We have eight deals working right now. We just had a closing yesterday, and Linda's out there right now making offers. She's on the phone right now as I speak, making offers and doing deals. Um, and, and I can tell you, we're gonna see this time and, and we're gonna see this for the next two, three, four, maybe five years. So I urge you to get out there and make some offers and do some deals. Now let's talk about some states, okay? I wanna tell you a little bit about some of the states and what you're, you can look for and see, because I mentioned that I was gonna tell you about, about the different states. For example, uh, and we're talking about the length of inventory, the number of months of inventory it's gonna to take to clear out all the shadow inventory. You got Miami, okay? You got Miami, there's 60 months. That's five years. That's five years worth of shadow inventory out there, okay? Uh, Dallas, we got Dallas. And Dallas, Texas, not Dallas, North Carolina. Um, you've got 56 months, okay? That's just, that's just under. Uh, that's just under five years. Uh, Cleveland, okay, Cleveland. Cleveland, you have 57 months, okay? Uh, let me see if I can find some more here. Charlotte, my market, Charlotte. In Charlotte, North Carolina, you have 65 months. 
of shadow inventory out there. In other words, that's the number of months it's going to take to clear out all the shadow inventory that's right now out there in the shadows. If it was all to come to foreclosure and you'd have to sell it, it would take a little over five years to do that. Uh, Tampa. Let's look at Tampa. Tampa is 57, just like Cleaver, okay? And Seattle. Let's look at Seattle. Seattle is 59 months. That's just under five years. Just under five years. Chicago is 59. It's 59 months. And Boston is 71 months. 71. That's just under six years. This is going to blow you away. New York is 130 months. That's that's over 10 years, 120 months. That's almost 13 years, okay? That, that just blows me away in New York. So what do you think about going up and buying some properties in upstate New York, Rochester, Syracuse, some of those areas? You can literally buy a duplex up there and you can pay eight, 10, dollars $12,000 for a duplex and rent it out for five to $600 per side, you can have a thousand to $1,200 a month coming in. And if you buy it for 10, you put five in work in it, you got 15 in it, that's a huge return on your money. You got most of your money back the first year, the first year. And, and guys, you need to take advantage of what I'm telling you right here. Now, the average person doesn't even know all this stuff that I'm sharing with you, okay? The average person doesn't know it. But now you know it, I know it, and we need to take advantage of it. And I want to show you what we're doing and how we are maximizing what we do, okay? Now, a couple of things I want to show, show you. A lot of people get out there and they will buy a house for $50,000, okay? They'll buy it for fifty, dollars and they'll sell it for sixty. dollars Okay? and they made $10,000 profit. Maybe that's a house that has an ARV of say 100 and it needs uh, and it needs repairs of 10,000, okay? So that's a good deal for the buyer, it's a good deal for me, it's a good deal for you. Uh, if I paid 50 for it and sold it for 60, I made a $10,000 profit and the ARV is 100,000. This person put 10 in it. They bought it for 60, they put 10 in it and they have 70 in it and it's worth 100. So they still have $30,000 in equity. That's a good deal for them, okay? But what if that $60,000 is all the money they have, okay? What if that 60,000 is all their money? all their money. I want to tell you a better way to do this, okay? Here's what we do, all right? Here's what we do. I'm going to draw a line right here. I'm going to write this in red, okay? Here's what we do. I like to buy, find a house that's listed for $25,000, $35,000, dollars something like that. We're going to wholesale it. Now, Filthy Riches deal, we're looking for houses listed for, for $25,000 or less. But if it's a filthy, if it's a wholesale deal, we look for houses listed for 25, 35, 45, whatever thousand or less, okay? So I like to buy a house for $10,000, okay? We're gonna buy it, okay? We're gonna buy it for 10,000 and we're gonna sell it for 20,000, okay? And we made 10,000 profit. Now this house over here, it might have an ARV of say 50,000, all right? And maybe it needed 10,000 at work. I don't, I don't know, okay? So, uh, so anyway, we're buying it for 10, we're selling it for 20. We made 10,000 here. We also made 10,000 here. We put up $10,000 to make 10,000. We doubled our money. But we put up 50000 to make 10000 here. Now check this out. This is very important. If this guy only has 
and he's an investor and he wants to build a rental portfolio or he wants to buy a house to fix it up and retail it and he only has $60,000. I can only sell him one house and I can only make $10,000 off of this guy right here, okay? That's all I can make off of that person, all right? However, if I sell that person a house for $20,000 and they have 60,000, I can sell them one house for 20, another house for 20, another house for 20. Then they spent $60,000. And if I made 10,000 profit on each one, I made $30,000 off of his $60,000. I tripled my money. I made $30,000 off of the same $60,000 investment. And the best part is, there's less risk for me, there's less risk for my buyer, and he's diversified. You might be thinking, but Larry, you made $30,000 off of this guy, and he only had 60. Yeah, but he's got less risk in a $20,000 deal than he does in a $60,000 deal. And he's got three houses now. He can buy one, sell one, rent, or he can sell one, rent one, do a filthy riches on one. He can do whatever he wanted to. There's all kinds of options, and he's diversified. He doesn't have all his eggs in one basket. If you know anything about the stock market, the first thing they tell you is to diversify, diversify. So I would a lot rather sell a cheap house. That's why you see a lot of our houses on our website at investorsrehab.com. You see a lot of our houses on there at 15,000, 20,000, 25,000, because we're negotiating deep, deep discounts on these houses. Okay, deep discounts. I'll give you an example of a deal that we have closing next week, real quick. Uh, here is a deal that we have closing next week. Here's a house, it was listed for, here's a house, it was listed for $45,000 is the list price, okay? 45,000, I'm gonna go back to Brown and make sure you can see that. $45,000, okay? is the list price. It had been dropped to 35, then 30, okay? And we offered $10,250, okay? And they took it, they took it, 30%. Now, I always tell people, if your first offer is ever accepted, it's too high. But guys, this was a HUD property. It was a HUD property. You've probably, if you know anything about real estate, if you've been around, talked to anybody at the RIA groups or whatever, HUD won't take less than 80 some percent, 82 percent, or 85 percent of list. This is 30 percent of list. 30 percent of list. We actually got two houses accepted the exact same day. We submitted two offers. One of them was one that I told you we closed yesterday. We paid ten thousand one hundred twenty-five for it. Sold it for nineteen. This one we have sold for twenty-three thousand dollars. Okay, twenty-three thousand. Now we're more than doubling our money. But check this out. This house has a tax value of eighty-six. I think it's eighty-six five. Is what it is. That's the tax value. Okay, and it's got. Uh, it's a three-bedroom three bedroom, two bath house, okay? And you can rent this house out for seven or $800 a month. In fact, that's what the buyer's gonna do. They're gonna buy it, they're gonna rent it out. It's got a fireplace, it's got, it's got two baths. It's, it's a decent house, it really is. And we paid 10, 125, we sold it for 23, and it has a tax value of $86,000. That's the other thing I like about the bank owned properties is if they put it out on the market, if it doesn't sell in 30 days, they drop the price. If it doesn't sell in 30 days, they drop the price. They're going to keep doing that every 30 days until that house sells, okay? So uh, that's pretty much that for today. I hope you enjoyed this training today on shadow inventory. Uh, I've had a lot of fun teaching it to you, and I hope that helps explain why when you hear the term shadow inventory, I hope this will help explain and now you know exactly what shadow inventory is and 
what to expect with it, and how you can take advantage of it. Guys, if you want to buy a house from me, I'm selling houses, InvestorsRehab.com. If you want to sell a house to me, go to InvestorsRehab.com and click on the link that says Submit a Property. Okay? I also have a lot of tools. I've got an appraisal application, a classified search application. I've got other things at LarryGoins.com. So feel free to go over to LarryGoins.com. And, and I got a lot of tools. I got all kinds of things over there you can check out. And I hope you really enjoyed this training on shadow inventory. And please remember, my team and I are here to help you become a successful investor. If we can ever help you with anything, please don't hesitate to ask. So thanks a lot, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.